I'm just going to go a little bit further forward because there's a bull coming down to drink as well. So we've got this young fellow over here who's giving us the evil eye. Oh, never mind. The other elephant is coming to us. See how he's smelling? He's not smelling us. He was actually smelling that other bull who's just on the other side of the dam. And they've obviously seen each other. I'm just going to duck for you quickly. And I wonder if we might get lucky and see them pushing and shoving. At the moment, that bull is smelling elephant dung. Probably from the breeding herd. They've already come down and had a drink. We must have missed them. They could still be moving through the block and crossing Bivol's hook boundary. So he's trying to pick up on their scent now. He's spending quite a bit of time. See that? Touching the dung, there might be a bit of urine on the ground too. And then he puts his entire trunk into his mouth. And he'll be able to tell if cows are in estrus. Very nice. And now you can see, you can probably hear how windy it is as well. It'd actually be a good spot down in the dam where that Ellie bull is standing. It will be very sheltered. What I will try and do at some point is because we know these boys are here and unless they're going to push and shove each other around or have a nice bath in the water, we might actually see if we can quickly catch the breeding herd because I think it's a particularly large group. Let's see what this fella does for us. Let's see if he's going to you're going to drink. It's not very nice water to drink, but anyways. Now, George, you're wondering how far away can elephants smell water? Well, they can sense it underneath the ground, definitely. I don't know if they're necessarily smelling it from kilometers and kilometers away. I think what happens there is that the elephants remember. They learn the various roots um, that have been passed down from generation to generation. Some Egyptian geese also coming into frame. They don't want to be left out this afternoon. And I think, so that whole thing of them sort of marching, sometimes it almost looks like they're running towards a watering hole. I think that's just them remembering that there was a pan here once, we've drank from this, you know, so many times that, you know, sometimes they're probably disappointed they arrive at a dam that might have been full at one point, and a few months later it could be completely dried out. Then they might try and dig in that pan to see if they can get the water from under the ground. Or they'll have to move on and find another one. So I don't, I don't know if they necessarily can smell it from kilometers and kilometers away. I'm surprised though that that bull is drinking this water because it's not very clean. Bivolzok Dam. It's sort of, I don't know. I, well, I suppose it must be all right. But elephants prefer clean water. I think that this other bull on the left is going to go and cause trouble. I think we might have a little standoff over here. You see, he's walking towards him now. But he turned, he almost spun in a spot and had his ears sort of open and facing in that chap's direction, not worried about us. And they're both at that age where they think that they are the biggest, strongest elephants out here, but in reality, they aren't. They're probably in their mid, mid 20s, I would say. Not anywhere near having the authority to mate with females just yet, but they don't know that. Well, they like to think differently. Yeah, I think he's going to go. Let's go up, up a little bit closer, Craig, I think, while he's walking away. <laughs> this might be a cool interaction. Can't see hippos today. I'm also just trying to scan to see if I can't see any movement of elephants going through this area. Mm, no. Let's see. Now, a question from Rachel. Hello, boy. You've already been in the water. We can see this. Sorry, Rachel. I was just watching this elephant because I thought he was maybe going to give us a bit of a mock charge there. And I, can find, I found the breeding herd too. The question from you was, do elephants do phlegm and grimace or do only predators do? Now, actually, it's quite funny, Rachel. It's not restricted to just the, the predators of the lions and leopards. You know, the best example, in my opinion, of an animal that does a phlegm and grimace is probably a horse. Have you ever been to a stable yard and you've gone past a couple of the stalls and the horses suck its head out and, and then all of a sudden it curls its top lip up? That's a phlegm and grimace too. That's exactly the same thing. I remember 
My horse would do it if I'd wear a strange perfume or if he didn't particularly like the smell of something. You know, if I maybe put hand lotion on my hands or I'd wash them with a the soap and then I'd pat him, he, he, would, he would turn his nose up to it basically. It was quite funny to see. So e elephants can't do the whole phlegm and grimace that showing the outward expression. And the reason for that is because I suppose they don't really have a top lip. Their top lip is all joined and it forms a trunk. So it's difficult for them, but zebras do it. Kudu will do it too, in Yala, Impala, Giraffe. They all show that outward expression of the phlegm and grimace. So if, if you don't know what we're talking about, if you've ever seen, like I said, a horse smile at you when it kills its top, that's the outward expression. But basically what that is, is typically they would use the Jacobson organ, which is not visible to us, but it's between their teeth and I suppose their nose, almost somewhere around there. And that is a way that they're able to tell if females are coming into estrus. It's a, like a super scent gland. Now I have spotted the rest of the herd, Craig. I think if we go down a sneaky road, which we've had many sightings on, it was a two track, but it's now become a road. I reckon if we go down there, we'll be able to get them better. Let's have a look. So they're just in over there. Now we've got a challenge in the form of this elephant who's already, oh my goodness, just drove over a stick and it cracked under my tire, that gave me a fright. So our roadblock is now in the form of this big elephant. Actually, he's coming around here and looking at this feather, fella, he's much larger. Ah, uh -uh. don't even start. Now this is gonna be fun, look at him. Hey, hey! That's not necessary. Just gonna watch him. He's very cheeky. He's not in must. He doesn't need to move around, but I also don't want to get stuck on a road where I can't move away. And I've got a damn wall that's not particularly open, so if I needed to move out, I couldn't. But I don't like what I'm doing right now because I've basically let him win. He's not a. I'm gonna actually have to turn it on. Right, okay. <laughs> He's so cheeky. I'm going, to shout, I'm going to shout at you again. So he's a little bit older than I thought. Now we're not in any particular danger because I can outrun the elephant. But my concern was that I wasn't going to be able to turn around in time. And obviously we've got a lot of natural obstacles and we've got a dam. We're on a dam wall so it's not like we can just drive anywhere we want. So I'm just going to turn around again. But I do want to watch him. So he's much older than the other bull. I'd probably put him in his early 30s. He's so cheeky. David, you said that you had quite enjoyed that elephant's swagger. Well, I wish he'd go and take his frustrations out on that other younger bull. I don't know why he's taking them out on us. So the reason why I shouted and sort of banged on the dashboard like that is because, well, I didn't want him to think that he could just come and walk up to my car. So what would have happened if I didn't do anything is he would have tried to do an intimidation process. I don't like to get close to an elephant of that size. And he would have stood right in front of the car and he would have towered right above us. I kid you not, that to the point where I probably could have been able to, if I stretched out, I would have been able to have touched his tr uh, tusks. I don't want to do that. I don't really want to get myself into a situation like that. Shouting and banging didn't do much to him. So I know from the get go, he's going to be trouble. He's obviously gotten away with intimidating cars before and it's now an issue, as you can see. And he needs to learn that he can't do that. But on a road like that where I don't have freedom to just drive anywhere fun, you know, if I, if I went, okay, what well, he's, <laughs> this is a serious charge now. Um, I'd rather not do it. I'd rather just go, okay, we'll just take a step back and we'll watch you from a distance. He's not in must. He's just a cheeky elephant bull that basically needs a hiding from a big tusker. So where's that massive tusker we had a few weeks ago that was hanging around on twin dams? We need him. Maybe he's also got his ego slightly bruised. Perhaps he's already been in and moving am amongst the breeding herd and the females have already chased him away. That probably maybe is another reason as to why he's slightly upset and now he's taking his frustrations out on us. But we'll see what we can do. We'll see if we can get another view. We might go the scenic way around to try and find the breeding herd. But we'll go back across to Tristan now and see how his cat is doing.